Hello, this is video 60, finally out of the fours and the fives. Um, this is Mr. Cozy, and we are talking about angles in degrees. We will look at, at uh, putting an angle into standard position, talking about angle quadrants and their measures, and then talking about coterminal angles. So let's, let's get started. Um, if we measure an angle in degrees, you should know this by now. Um, a, a degree measure start at zero, and that's essentially no angle. And they go up to 360, and that's essentially a whole circle. So if we think about an angle, if it's zero degrees, it's essentially no angle at all. It's just two uh, two rays on top of each other. If it's uh, 360, that other ray has traveled all of the way around the circle and has landed up and has landed um, in the same spot where it started. So once again, we have two angles or two rays on, on top of, of each other. Anything between 0 and 360 is some kind of an angle. For instance, 90 is, is right, right here. This is a, a right angle, and so on. Um, to help us all reference angles in the same way, because angles can be oriented um, any way we want, and that's nice, but it, it, it can make it hard to compare them we put angles in what we call standard position. Standard position works this way. Uh, you have a, a coordinate plane. One of the sides of the angle that we call the initial side, we put on the positive end of the x-axis with the vertex at the origin. So vertex of the angle at the origin, one ray is always on, aligned on the positive side of the x-axis. This is called the initial side of the angle. Um, we, then, we then go counterclockwise and um, the other side just lands wherever it lands. So let's say it's here. We measure the the angle counterclockwise. This is called the terminal side. Okay? So it's in standard position. If one side is is on the the positive side of the x-axis, ver vertex in the middle and we go counterclockwise to reach the terminal side the the other side of the angle um, putting angles in this in, in in this orientation makes it easy to compare two angles because they are always oriented in the same way if I put one angle like this and another angle like this, it's easy to see which angle is is larger because you can tell the that the red angle is bigger. Okay, putting angles in in standard form is a great mode of comparison. It also has some other um, some of uh, other benefits. If we put an angle with one, one, one side on the positive end of the x-axis, depending on the measure of, of the angle, the terminal side falls into a, a different quadrant of the coordinate plane. And um, ang angles that fall in the same quadrants tend to have similar properties that we will talk about later. 90 degrees is right here, okay? And an angle that's 90 degrees has its terminal side um, on the, the pos positive end of the y-axis. 
Therefore, any angle whose measure is it, it, it is between 0 and 90 falls in quadrant 1. Okay? So um, a 60 degree angle, which is right here, fall its terminal side falls into quadrant 1. An angle that is larger than 90 but less than 180 falls into quadrant 2. An angle that is um, larger than 180 but less than 270 falls into quadrant 3. And quadrant 4 is between 270 and 360. Now, the reason why we classify angles according to the, the, the quadrant they fall into is that um, 135 and, one, and 150 have more to do with each other than, let's say, one, I, either of these angles and um, 300. Okay, 300 is is has a few different properties that we will talk about later than either um, uh, 135 or one, 150. So I expect you to be able to to cl classify angles according to the, to the quadrant that they that their terminal side lands in um, because it will be useful later. Last thing. Um, I've said that angles are measured from 0 to 360, but that's not entirely true. Once we put an angle into standard form, a couple of things become possible. One, one thing is because my term, terminal side can land where, wherever it wants, I could go around the circle a few times before landing on a particular measure. Okay, this angle actually went around one, two, three times before landing on 60 degrees. So the, 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 the actual measure of, of this angle is 360 times 3. It's actually a, a thousand and forty degrees because I went around several times. I can go many times around the circle and land and that's a valid angle. Okay, so m my largest ang ang angle size is not 360 because I can go around several times. I, I can also, instead of, of, heading cl of heading counterclockwise, I can go clockwise around the the circle and that results in in an angle that's negative okay so once I put an angle into standard form a lot of other options become available to me going around several times going counterclockwise or um clockwise instead of counterclockwise. I can also go clockwise around several times and end up with a giant negative angle. Therefore, because I have all of these options for, for angles, we have this idea of two angles being coterminal. Coterminal -ter means that two angles have the same ter 
terminal sides. In 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 other words, it's a kind of equivalence. Not equality, but equivalence. If two angles are coterminal, I can treat them in the same way because they they have the same ter terminal side. They land in the same place on the coordinate plane. An example of two, of co -ter terminal angles is positive sixty and negative three hundred. Each of, of these two angles have different measures, but the same terminal side, and therefore they are coterminal. And therefore, I can treat them in kind of the same way. Like, likewise, of uh, zero degrees. Is co is coterminal with 360 degrees, which is co co -term -term terminal with 720 degrees. All of these angles share the same terminal side, and so I can treat them in pretty much the same way. Okay. Now I know that I am over time, and I'm sorry for that. Um, however. Let's talk about one more thing before I let you go. Two angles are coterminal if their difference is a multiple of 360. Okay, so for for instance, are 210 and negative 150 coterminal? Negative 150. Well, subtract them. If you if you get a multiple of 360, then they are coterminal. 210 minus negative 150 is 360. 360 is a multiple of itself, so this this is coterminal. Okay, how about 870 and negative 340? Well, subtract them. 870 minus negative 340 is a number. If I divide that with 360, I should I should end up with an even number because this is not even these are not coterminal. How about 140 and negative 20? Well, subtract them. 140 minus negative 20 is negative 160. That's not going to be a multiple of 360. So these are not coterminal. How about negative 75? Sorry, negative 75 and 1,005. Well, negative 75 minus 1,005 is a number. If I divide that with 360, I should get an, e uh, an even number, which, which I, I do negative 3. So this, this is coterminal. I'm sorry, a whole number. Okay, coterminal angles have a difference that's a multiple of 360. Another way to think about this is take take these two angles and add or sub subtract 360 to them until you get something between 0 and 360. So like neg negative 75, if I add 360 t t to that, I get 285, meaning negative 75 is, is equivalent to 285. Do the same thing with uh, with 8,005. Now, I want to subtract 360 from it. 
keep subtracting 360 until you get something between 0 and 360. If you get the same number, then they are coterminal. Okay? All right. I've thrown way too much at you. We'll, we'll talk more about this tomorrow. Have a great day, and I'll see you later.